Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Swore, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage, Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is going to look at the C++ programming language and we're going to use that as a review of the homework problem uh, for my uh, couple classes, uh, Advanced C++ class and also for my uh, Assembly Language classes. And you might already see this video, I have this the same problem in C++ here and I also have it in Python in the other video that I made uh, five minutes ago at this point <laughs> in my life, in my time stream, obviously different in yours. So the problem is that I am going to take a trip, a golf cart trip along the prime planes, and I need to know how much fuel I can use, I need to start with so that I never have to run out of fuel because the, the going theory is the second you step foot outside the cart, no matter where you are, all of the universe's fears, all of your fears, the worst fears that you can come up with, come and get you and haunt you and do all sorts of terrible things to you. I'm just in a place. But I'm just, I think it's, it's funny to me right now. It probably won't be funny later. But anyway, so that's the, that's the problem. How far can I go? So I'm going to use up 2.125 units of fuel per mile traveled. And at any odd prime number, I'm allowed to fill up that much fuel. So you can imagine, and um, you can imagine this is you know a trickier type of problem than you're used to, maybe used to seeing for a word problem. But the Dr. Barker video that I've already linked to in a few places, um, it's pretty cool. It shows you the theory and it shows you the, the the proof that if you once you get to a certain spot, you don't have to worry ever again. And so that's and that's that's where this is going. But the problem is, how much fuel do I need to start with so I never have to worry about? It? Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to start with mile zero. I am going to be uh, basically how much fuel do I have? I'm going to double that up. Double fuel. I'm going to say I'm going to start with seven like I did in the previous video. And I'm just going to use a const uh, double fuel burned per mile. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been a fun couple of days. Okay, so I'm going to say while my fuel is greater than or equal to the fuel burned per mile, then I'm going to keep on going. Yeah, we'd say, why not zero? Well, it's because you don't want to go, you can't go a full mile unless you have exactly or more of the amount of fuel you need to burn a full mile. So this is where, this is where the thought process for me goes. And if you do do that, if you can go a full mile, you will. And you will uh, plus plus mile. I will increment the number of miles and I'll do that with the fuel. And just for this, I will print out just, um, it's not as fun as the Python way of doing things here. So let's see, I will, I have how much fuel? And I gotta make sure I do the uh, amount, or mile, mile as well. Mile, mile, add a space. Okay, so let's see where we get now. Let's just make sure everything's kind of working, kind of doing our thing. And you can kind of see there at mile one, I'm at 4.875 and everything's working its way down. And like I say, I don't have a full amount of fuel, so I can't get there. I can't get to mile four. I'm going to make this a little bigger for you guys. So, and then at the end here, what I'm going to do here just to say, okay, mile, is to say I run out of fuel at a certain point, so I don't have to worry about the fuel per se when I get to here. But I do want to know, like, what fraction of the mile did I could I go? <coughs> so I can add in, like, how much fuel do I have? And that's already a double, so I don't have to worry about doing any extra math. And I can divide that into fuel per, per mile, which is, like I say, if I have a double, and both of these guys are doubles, so this will be a double. This will work out to double, so I won't lose the fractional part of this. So at least with this, I should, if I remember, I should get 0.7088 or something. Nope, nope, never mind. Uh, 3.294. I guess I used maybe 8. I don't remember what I did. Uh, but anyway, so 3.29412. And is that correct? You can't just trust things, right? 0.625 divided by 2.125. And I do get the correct answer. So yes. At mile, 3.294 is pretty close to pi, is where you should, close enough, right, is where you should start looking for me. I can't get out of the cart, so please come help me. Please, please, please come help me. So that's, that's the basic thought process of just getting the basic, the basic loop going. 
So the next step was I need to find a way to say something like if is odd prime uh, the mile that I'm at, then I want to add fuel. <laughs> and yes, that's not going to work because I don't have a function, but I'm going to have to do something like fuel plus equals uh, the mile because I said the, the number of the mile is how much fuel is stored at that location. That's just the way it goes. I made that up. That is the why. <laughs> and so, um, so what I want to do here is print everything and then print everything here so you can kind of see everything kind of working its way through. Move, move the full mile and then add the fuel if you have to, right? And then, and then at the end, let's figure out where I ended up. So this is the final step here is the tree, just to try this on the final step of writing the code anyway. And then everything else is just trial and error to find the answer. So I want a function that's called is odd prime. And I'm going to pass in a mile. And so, and the whole thing is this is odd prime. That just means that the only even prime, which is two, it doesn't count. So if my mile is less than or equal to two, I've got to remember what language I'm in here. I just wrote Python. I'm going to return false because there's no reason to continue on and do any other extra work because anything negative, zero, one, and two are all not prime numbers according to our rules. <coughs> so just do the easy out. But as we were discussing in the other video and as we're going to discuss now, the rest of this is to say now I have to do a for loop. And I say for. And I'll say, what is my index? What, what am I going to be dividing into? I'm going to start from 2, and I'm going to say my index, and, and again, this is not the best way. I know you can use square root and stuff like that, but this is just the kind of, again, this is just a logical description. We're just going to keep the algorithm simple. But what I need to test here is, if I'm going to test like the number 9, I have to divide by 2 and get the remainder. And at, at any point, if I divide by one of these factors, by these uh, divisors, and I, and I get a whole number, or I get a 0 as the response to that, that means that the number divides evenly into that. Like 8, the number 8 is not prime because 2 divides into it, 4 remainder 0. So if at any point the mile number mod the index is equal to zero, then I'm going to return false. I can get rid of some. I just I don't normally forego the formality, but I just just to kind of get things going. And most of you are most of the people in the world know Python more than C anyway. That's just the way things are in the year 2022 as we live in the future. But if I get through all of that and I can't find a divisor like the number five. Divide by two, I get a remainder one. Divide by three, I get a remainder two. Divide by four, I get a remainder one. So all the numbers that I could divide by do not get me a divisor. So the only thing that could be divisor is one in itself. It's a prime number. And again, two doesn't count because it falls through this case here. So this, only, this will only get called for any numbers three or larger. And that's any prime number. And so this might do it now. Let's see what happens. The hard part is thinking and doing and talking and all of that all at the same time. Oh, this, that's what it was. With, <laughs> with, the, with the extra stuff here, we know that this works right because 1.5 divided by 2.125 is 0.7058. So, that, so now, as we're discussing now, the problem comes into you think your code is right. So the question comes down to at what number, amount of fuel does it go from I get stalled somewhere, like this, blah, 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 blah. I get stalled from somewhere, but, or it goes on for infinity, which means that's, that's what we want, right? Like this, this, and according to Dr. Barker's videos, this will go on forever because of the way the numbers, and you can see it just keeps on going, because of the way the primes are distributed on the number line. And so the question comes down to, well, what number is it? And if you've already watched the other video, you know how it works. So 8.35 halts, 8.4 keeps on going forever. So I'm getting closer. You just, you just got to experiment and keep working your way down. <coughs> so 8.34. Oops, there it is. Hello, computer. There we go. So 8.34, it continues on and halts. But 8.35, oops, 
8.35. Oh, 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 duh. How about, and then, and then you work your way around, and the answer ends up being 8.37. I'm like, why isn't this? Why did, I was kind of surprised there, talking myself into it. So 8.375 is the actual answer, and how do I know that? Because this will go on forever. However, if I make this 8.37499999, then you will see that this thing halts. And so the answer to part one is exactly that, 8.375, because that is the smallest number where I don't need to worry about fuel anymore because I, once I get to mile 11, I'm done forever, it looks like. It just seems like once I get to mile 11, I'm good forever. So part two then is what happens when I drop one. And you can see what happens if I drop it. And just because of the way this is, gets, this is getting formatted, uh, maybe I'll include the formatting here. That's what makes Python more fun, is that it takes less work, less effort to get the job done here. Let's see if that does it. Oops. Oh, no, no, that compiled. I can't, I'm, I'm trying to work it down. The answer co doesn't come out to mile 11. The, mile, the answer comes out to mile 10.9999999999. Because if you got to mile 11, you would continue on forever. So say C++ makes it a little more challenging here. I don't know why. Maybe I have to put this right in front. Or maybe I have to put the fixed. Let me see. Oops. Let me, I'll just put fixed in here first. The fun of C++ is trying to, trying to remember and guess what they want out of us. Nope. There's my 11.000. I'm going to sneeze. Try to... Just try to save you guys all that. Sorry, you got the warning. Um, let's see. Okay, so let me trying to figure out how to give you guys and show you how to do this. There we go. So you can see, you know, just one drop will get me closer and closer to eleven, but it won't get me to eleven. So the answer is like ten point nine 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 nine. And remember, according to our rules everything wrong in the universe will come and get you even if you're one one trillionth of a trillionth of an angstrom of a plank unit away from mile 11 you are done for and you cannot travel through the prime planes anymore and you will have to stay on that cart for the rest of your natural life that's just how that's just how it goes okay so that <coughs> excuse me is everything i wanted to cover in this video so again a little more code it's definitely more uh, more you know, more statically typed, all of that kind of stuff. C++ is what C++ is. Um, so if you want to see the, the accompanying video in Python, that is there for you as well. So you have two different ways to approach the same problem using two different programming languages. So as always, if I misspoke about something or if you have any questions or if I did something wrong, which is possible since I'm sometimes I branch off into places I don't 100% belong, but I do try. I try to I try to be polite about the things that I'm uh, touching and, and working with. So if any of that has happened, please let me know in the comments below or or email me at swordb at you. So this the fall and that's what term is this? The spring 2022 term is upon us here and now we got the cobwebs off. We are ready to push on into bigger, better, greater things when it comes to C++ programming and Python programming and all the things we need to do. So I'm excited for the new term, and I hope you are too. Hope to see you in a future video. Thank you. Take care, everybody.